Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cool, simple functional equation. Now, there are kind of two types of functional equations, in my opinion. The ones that have two variables or more variables in it, and the ones that are like this one. These are easier to solve because you don't really have to check a lot of things like what is f of zero, is the function continuous, or is it given, uh, is it bijective, blah, 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 so on and so forth. For these ones, basically, you are, by the way, you are looking for f of x, an expression for f of x. So that complicated expression inside the parentheses, we need to turn it into something simple. And we use substitution for that, right? So let's go ahead and do it. And by the way, I put x squared on the right hand side. There's a reason for that. If I had x instead of x squared, then we would have two solutions that would some kind of create some problems. So to eliminate that issue, I turned that into x squared. So this is also a homemade equation, which is something easy to make. All right, so let's go ahead and set this gigantic thing to something. How about calling it t? Okay. So under those conditions, I get the following equation, which kind of looks simple. f of t equals x squared. It's, it's nice, right? But on the right-hand side, we don't want x, we want t. So we want to be able to express this in terms of t so that we can turn it into something in terms of x. Because the variable that you use on both sides, as long as they're the same, it doesn't matter. They're just dummy variables. They're not smart. They're just dummies, right? Anyways, so let's go ahead and see what this means. What did I call t? that radical thing, square root of x squared plus 1 minus x over x. So let's go ahead and write it down and see if we can manipulate that. It's all about manipulations. So we set this equal to t, right? There's no radical at the bottom, so I'm right. And what am I going to do? My goal is the following. Since in this equation we have a t inside the parentheses or on the left-hand side, but we have an x on the right-hand side, we want to be able to express x in terms of t. So that's our goal. Express x in terms of t. And this is the equation we're going to use for that. So to keep a long story short, we have to solve for x. How do you solve for x in an equation like this? You first cross multiply. Obviously, you don't want x to be 0, right, in this case. But is, as, is f defined for 0 at 0? At the end, we're going to find out. And let me tell you something. It is not going to be defined. So, anyways, I have a radical, so let's go ahead and add x to both sides. So this becomes tx plus x, which I can write as t plus 1 times x. Now is a good time to square both sides and get rid of all the radicals. Let's square both sides. When we square the left-hand side, we get x squared plus 1. When we square the right-hand side, we do get... Uh, a, what's that called? A product. Okay, t plus 1 squared multiplied by x squared. Now, I do have x squared on both sides, and we are trying to express x in terms of t, right? We are trying to express, well, I shouldn't necessarily say express x in terms of t, either x or x squared, because we have x on the right-hand side, but we also have x squared. Anyways, I kind of gave it away a little bit. So from here, and you can tell by this equation that x squared is very easy to isolate, right? So let's go ahead and do it. Subtract x squared from both sides, and you're going to get the following. t plus 1 squared x squared minus x squared equals 1. I kind of switch sides here. And now I have an x squared, so I can take it out. And then inside the parentheses, I'm going to have this t squared plus 2t plus 1, and then minus 1 because x squared you took out. And now, what am I going to do with this? Cancel out the 1, and then divide both sides by t squared plus 2t. 2t or not 2t, didn't work. So x squared equals 1 over t squared plus 2t from here. Okay, so I was able to isolate x squared. Now at this point, if you wanted to go off on a tangent and find out the x values, there will be two x values here. One of them is going to be this one, and the other one is just going to be the opposite because there are basically two quantities here whose square equals 1 over t squared plus 2t. 
That's why solving for x causes some issues. We kind of have to consider when this is going to be positive, when this is going to be negative, so on and so forth. Anyways, let's go ahead and use this. Now remember, I was I already had the f of t um, equal to x squared, so f of t equals x squared, and we know that x squared is equal to 1 over t squared plus 2t. And now if you forget about the x squared, you get f of t equals 1 over t squared plus 2t. And then our goal was to find f of x. So you can basically just replace t with x. And again, it's not the same x that we started with. This is just a different x, but it doesn't matter. So our function f of x in general can be expressed as 1 over x squared plus 2x, which is obviously undefined at 0 and undefined at negative 2. So x, those x values should be excluded. But other than that, x can be anything. Now, so we got this answer. Now what happens if you go back, if you go back, to uh, the original expression and kind of replace x with, you know, uh, this expression. So what is f of square root of x squared plus 1 minus x over x will be, so kind of like going backwards, working backwards with this, right? So this would be a fairly easy problem because if they gave you f of x and they ask you to find f of square root of x squared plus 1 minus x over x, then you would just have to plug it in. In the first one, we kind of had to solve for the value, right? So here, it's just a matter of substitution. Let's go ahead and do it. And if you go ahead and plug this in here, you're going to have to square that, and then two times the same thing. Let me go ahead and manipulate this real quick because I want to show you what that turns into. And then from here, if you square the expression, you're going to get the difference. So x squared plus 1 minus 2x times the radical plus x squared. And that will be divided by x squared. And then this is going to be just 2 times. And if I make a common denominator, that will be x squared again. So I'll get the following, something like this. And that way I can just add the numerators. And then when we flip, x squared is just going to appear in the numerator. At the bottom, I'm going to have the following, x squared plus, this probably should, do, should be longer, minus 2x square root of x squared minus 1 plus x squared plus 2x times the radical, so I'm kind of distributing here, and then minus 2x squared. x squared plus x squared, this is kind of interesting, x squared and x squared are going to cancel out with the x 2x squared, and then I'll end up with negative 2x times the square root of x squared plus 1, and it's opposite. These two are also going to cancel out, leaving us with x squared over 1, which is equal to x squared. So working backwards, we can also verify that, yes, this solution is going to give us what we started with. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.